Welcome everybody out. Tonight's topic, wellness topic, is developing self-love. And here's the mother of all love, Jay Baldwin, to show it for us. It's not a bit over the top. Not yet. I'm very uncomfortable with that. Thank you, though. Developing self-love, everybody. All right. So um, this is a very important topic. And I just want to get it out there to help people clarify. Um, so now I'm going to scoot this up so you can read it along with me. Okay. So, you know, Louis, like Louise Hay um, in her book, uh -huh. talks about people say, you know, a lot of people have these um, physical symptoms that tie back to an emotional symptom, which is related just to they don't like themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I, I think it's important to Uh-huh. So, okay. There was a little bit of confusion about self-love, so I wanted to clarify, and that's why I wanted to do this class. So, ever since we were little, most of us were taught not to be selfish. We were taught uh, to be selfless and put others first, okay? With our childlike understanding, we began to minimize ourselves and put others above us, okay? That's how children think, right? Um, either or, all right? Um, to make sure that we apply this teaching well, we overcompensate by putting ourselves down. Okay, and this just leads us to feeling bad about ourselves and you know that the negative feelings held for a long time inside of you would develop into health problems and other life problems, right? So, you know, I just want to clarify. Okay, so the lesson we were meant to get was to be considerate. Okay, so self-abuse, self-loathing and self-hatred was it the intention of our parents or church leaders' teachings wasn't at all so what makes it especially bad is that generations after generations our parents and grandparents have passed down their version of being selfless selfless to us and uh, you know all this is actually it's like self um and this self-abuse is compounded over the years as so you might have um, parents or grandparents that have gut problems and then your parents have gut problems and then it comes down to you okay and um you know you think it's just generational it's just a problem with you and well, look how terrible you are uh but it's because all of us just kind of miss the mark a little bit so what could have been a virtue is now a vice so god wants us to be happy we just have to remember that he wants us to be happy our parents want us to be happy um so why aren't we happy most of the time uh, we haven't learned happiness from them because they don't know what that fully means, okay? Um, is that true? You guys see that? Yep, we want our kids to be happy, but we, we sacrifice and we're not happy, and so it's really difficult to teach them happy. Okay, so um, we, yeah, we... We do have a lot of people that, you know, say like, oh, self-love, you know, and teaching someone to be vain or yes, yeah. teaching people to you know, yeah. feel like they are entitled to stuff. Yeah, selfish. Yeah. yeah. So it's not what we're talking about here. So we aren't fully happy because we don't have a healthy, balanced self-love. Like anything, it's balance. Okay, so you can take any virtue to advice. Uh, so we have to kind of understand what that really, really means. So the first commandment of God was to love God, right? And that we get that. Um, the second commandment is to love others like you love yourself, not love others and hate yourself and, you know, not love others and then put them above you and, and suppress yourself and minimize you. It's not as, which is equal, right? So this means, you know, so you have the scripture in Mark 30, 31. Um, do you want to read that? Oh, I think he told us the gist of it. And thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Yep. So this has a lot of meaning to me, I feel. Um, so this means that you can, you can and should love yourself. So how can you fully love others completely and conditionally when you don't know how to love yourself? 
and I see a lot of people, they, they self-abuse, they self-loathe, and they said, oh, I'll put everyone first, and I'll take care of everyone, and I love everyone, I serve everyone. I just feel like it's sort of fake. If you don't truly love yourself, how can you make feel comfortable? Okay. So, I feel like um, it's, it's a revelation to me. Okay. So to clarify what we are taught, um, we are taught, to, you know, we're asked to love others as much as we love ourselves. Um, that means to be considerate and see others for the amazing person that they are too. That means you are amazing and they are amazing too. So we do not have to minimize ourselves and abuse ourselves. Okay, we are all equal, equally important and loved by God. And you see this, like, I think when you, mm -hmm. when you hear, you know, a lot of successful people, when they mm -hmm. talk, they, they just say good things about everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, this guy is a great guy. So everybody's good. The whole world is good. And, and that's... And they that's, laugh at their faults and they laugh yeah, at their shortcomings. They're putting they're everybody okay up it. instead of mm -hmm. pull, pulling everybody down. Just yeah. saying good things about others. Mm -hmm. saying, and they, and they, they say good things about themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. Successful people, they promote themselves. Mm -hmm. and they, they, they're okay with that. Yeah. They're okay with saying, right. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good at doing this. So yep, and I'm no good at that, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyone want to comment or say anything? Oh, oh I'll continue. Um, so let's look at self-love versus self-esteem. So I had a lot of gut issues for a long time, and I didn't even know I had gut issues. Um, the gut problems led to eczema, asthma, allergies, acne, sinus problems, and weight gain and more. Um, and to resolve this problem, I had to find out why I had the gut problem in the first place. And then I discovered the root of it was anxiety and stress. And you think to yourself, uh, okay, but um, digging deeper, I discovered that anxiety and stress is a form of fear. And fear is about not being safe, of course. Um, and so the antidote to fear is faith. And faith means that I'm safe and unloved. So now I have to understand that I am loved. It's, it's you know, kind of uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Uh, loved means I have to accept that God loves me and is watching out for me. You know, and just couldn't fathom why God would love me. You know, I didn't deserve it. I haven't done anything to earn it, right? So as much as I hungered for it, I wondered how can anyone love me, right? And sometimes most people, when I talk to them and I help them with energy healing, that's, that's the feel, feeling I get. Like, you know, I want it, I want to be loved, but I don't think I can deserve it or earn it in any way. So, of course, you know, you often uh, you list all your flaws like I did and, and all the reasons why I wasn't good. And then the more you do that in your mind, of course, the, it didn't make you any happier. And so should I try to stop that, right? Um, you know, so now I realized that I was measuring myself with the world's measuring tools. And the world's measuring tools were, you know, to be the biggest, the bestest, tallest, smartest, prettiest compared to other people. So it seemed so exclusive and only one person can be on top. And in my mind, I was so confused because it was so subjective. How do we know you're the best of the best? And, and you know, who was best and who wasn't? Very confusing. Um, so naturally, I listed all ways to fix this by working hard and trying to measure up. Um, I worked hard to prove and to come up with reasons why I was okay and good enough. Okay. And it was exhausting because as soon as I thought of, that I was good enough in one area, I found that um, somebody else was better than me and I saw that I was lacking in other areas. So it's just um, self-defeating all the time. And I realized I was working hard and, you know, to get higher self-esteem and it wasn't working. It wasn't making me happy. I realized it wasn't God's way. You know, it, it was not God, not of God. Um, it was sort of Satan's version of self-love. So it was about competition. It was dividing. It was scarcity. You know, causes a lot of jealousy, coveting, and judgmental thoughts. So it was about being selfish, actually. You know, focusing my energy on me and how insufficient I am. Always 
poking, you know, looking back at me and thinking how terrible and spending all that time, you know, on me. Okay, so that's another form of selfishness. Um, so after a while, I asked myself, what is God's way then, <laughs> right? Um, so if my building, uh, you know, building my self-esteem was it helping me receive God's love, then how do I do this? So as I pondered this, I was shown a picture of my children in my mind. You know, and God said, look at your children. And I got it. You know, you know, you think about the day that I birthed my first child. I held her in my arms and an overwhelming sense of love rushed over me. How can you love, have so much love for someone you just barely met? Okay. You, you will do anything to provide for and protect this small person. She didn't need to earn it or deserve that love in any way, but I loved her anyways. Why? Because she was mine. And that was the answer. Bingo, right? She was mine. Okay. So I've got a cute little picture of a baby here. Okay. So you are a child of God. Okay, you are loved simply because you are his son or his daughter. You are his. So at that point, I just broke down and cried because I started to love myself the way God loved me. Okay. So my children are not perfect. They're still growing and learning. They have weaknesses, but it's okay. It doesn't stop me from loving them. So when the kids were little, you loved your kids as they wobbled funny and learning how to walk. Okay, they aren't perfect walkers um, at that time, but it doesn't matter. Okay, you know that soon they will grow up and they'll be different yet again. Um, and you love them every step of their progression. I realize that God loves us the same way. You know, and that's, that makes it really easy for me to, to allow myself to be loved. So why should we play God and judge ourselves worthy or unworthy? Okay, we can just accept and love ourselves unconditionally now the way God has made us. So there is a loving reason why you were born, where you were born. There's a loving reason why you look the way you look. Okay, the eyes, the nose. You know, love and be content with who you are and what you have. And then serve with whatever gifts and talents you were given. There is no need to compare. Right? Comparison shows your lack of gratitude for what God has given you. Okay, so since I learned that truth, I can see my own beauty. Okay, my body healed faster. Uh, my relationships strengthened. My financial situation improved. And I allowed God to bless me, right? I worked on releasing self-imposed limitations as I find them. And it has been liberating and a joyful journey. Okay, so self-love isn't selfish. It isn't, what is it, vain, okay? It is accepting yourself as a child of God. It is stepping into your place in God's world and being a good steward. You know, you see what God has given you and now you can maximize what you've been given and gratefully and without blaming, comparison or complaining. So if you think about your children, you know, if you hear them self-loathing, if you feel, hear them, you know, abusing themselves, it's hurtful, you know, because you just want that child to be happy and loved, right? And so, you know, we I don't feel a need to self-abuse anymore. You know, if I mess up, big deal, pick myself up and try again. Okay, you don't need to, you know, start listing out all the reasons why I'm not worthy, I'm no good. Um, you know, saying mean things about myself. So, you know, if you have a belief that you have to do it all on your own to fix problems yourself, well, you need to change that. The reality is you can't do it all on your own and you don't have to and you shouldn't have to uh, do it all on your own. You are a child of God and he loves you dearly. God wants you to give you everything just because you're his. You do not have to earn or deserve anything. As long as you understand where your blessings are from, um, and continue to connect to him, then that is enough. So you don't have to fear that you'll be spoiled or feel entitled because being spoiled and feeling entitled means that you've forgotten, uh, you know, to give glory and credit back to God. 
where the blessings come from. Okay, I'm gonna pause here, guys. You wanna um, comment or add anything to this? I know I've been struggling with a lot of these, like the, I guess, self-deprecation and just always, you know, I mean, we're raised in a society that, you know, basically teaches us to compare ourselves to everybody else around us. And so I know growing up for me, that was like super duper hard because I had this, you know, brilliant mind, but I never felt like my physical self was equal to my, you know, spiritual or mental self, if that made sense. And so I was always, you know, kind of beating myself down, like, yeah, I can do anything I want with books and knowledge, but I'll never be as pretty, you know, as so-and-so, or I'll never, you know, have that boyfriend or marry a really handsome guy or whatever it was that you're always comparing yourself, you know, to, I guess, at, you know, when you're a young girl, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how you say, well, I'm good at this, but it doesn't make me worthy or good because look at all the things that I'm not good at. All right. Yeah, yeah, you always focus on those things that you're not so great at, which I think is sad. Um, you know, you may have been given these gifts and these talents, but you don't focus on them because you're about what you don't yeah. have. The grass is always greener, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? That's, that's really good, Marisa. Anyone else to want to comment? Okay, so what I'm saying is um, the world's way of self-love is, um, you know, raising our self-esteem by comparing, by listing, um, you know, why we're good, you know, creating, finding reasons why we're good. But of course, you know, there's, there's so many people out there and there's so many different um, ways of doing things. So, you know, it's subjective. So you always air on the side of, well, I'm not as good as, um, you know, and just feeling not good. Even if you feel like you're great, you have to, you feel like maybe you need to suppress other people, make sure that they're down here so they remain great. Okay. So it's still comparing. Um, and it doesn't help you find your true self. Okay. All right, anyone else want to say anything? I was thinking more about what you said about not feeling like you're worthy or deserving of God's blessings, because that's something I've been working on more recently about just kind of opening up my, my, my mind and my spirit to the idea that, yes, I do deserve this. You know, I'm as equal to any other brother or sister here on earth, and that I shouldn't be denying myself, like, the blessings that are coming in just because I may not be recognizing them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. That's really good. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like your children. They ask for bread and then um, you give them a whole bakery and they're like, no, no, I'll just take this tiny, small piece. A slice would do, you know, and you're thinking, well, what? why? Just take the whole thing. It's all yours, you know, and it's a no, 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 no. And you're frustrated because you're like, well, I want to bless you. I want you to be happy. Just be happy. Right. Well, I think that the child um, parent, um, analogy is really good because you think like do i deserve this or am i worthy of it and those that's not even the issue at all You're just looking at the, the wrong issue it's not whether you deserve it or whether you are worthy of it it's, you know god loves you he's giving you blessings um you just have to receive them mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of you receiving what you have and what's been given you and accepting things that come your way you know, instead of worrying about whether you're worthy or not, you know, you get, you receive uh, an unexpected, um, you know, blessing of money or whatever that comes your way and you just receive it and, and be grateful. And, you know, instead of wor wondering, um, am I worthy of this or yeah. am, 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 do I deserve this? That, that shouldn't even be um, a question. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's a matter of, um, are you going to receive it or not? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, because we, we read about <clears throat> people being blessed because they're righteous. Righteous doesn't mean that they deserved it. Righteous means they're connected to God. That's all. Right? 
and you connect to God in any way, shape or form you can in your own way and serving the way you ought to. And, um, you know, blessings will be poured upon you so much so that you can't, you don't have room to, to contain it. Okay. So uh, I have some oils here to help you find out who you truly are. And then that will help you develop more self-love. Okay. And live and step up to, you know, and live the way you ought to with power, love and light. Okay. So black pepper. Okay, black pepper is the oil of unmasking. So it helps you take off that mask and um, show the world who you really are. Okay, um, face yourself kind of thing. And, uh, you know, God loves you for every, you know, every step of the way. So um, as you progress, it doesn't matter if you're not there, wherever there is, yet uh, you're still lovable. You're still great. Okay, well, God loves you for all your flaws, the same way that you love your children. You know, you don't want to not love them because they've got some weaknesses. It's crazy, we don't do that. So I don't know why we do that to God. Um, so smell it, drink it and rub it. And allow yourself to be more self-aware and courageous. And you know, anytime you use any of these oils, of course it's gonna help you physically. You see physical evidence of your spiritual and emotional change. Okay, the mental change. Okay, so that's black pepper. That smells like pepper. All right, lavender. Uh, lavender helps you open up, relax, and stop hiding. Um, you know, you can freely express yourself now without worrying about what others may think of you. When you love and accept yourself, you will see that others love and accept you too. You no longer fear rejection because you no longer reject yourself. So you smell it, drink it, and rub it. Now I just want to remind um, the, everybody that if you don't like the oils, um, it's about the emotions that you're not ready for. Um, so work on it um, and until that oil smells nicer to you. It's a gauge to help you know how much you've changed and how well you're doing. All right, coriander. Okay, coriander helps you be true to yourself. Um, coriander helps you absorb the sweetness of life um, and you will attract more sweetness when you have sweetness inside of you, right? Um, so be guided by your inner light. You can and should be unique. Uh, you add your version to the bouquet of talents in the world. You do not have to be who others are and definitely not need to please everyone. So smell it, drink it, and rub it. Okay, make that association. Allow the coriander to help you in that way. Okay, so geranium uh, reminds you to trust yourself. You've got this, right? Your inner light will shine through as you love and trust yourself. You are sweet too. You know, that geranium, it smells very sweet. Okay? Be tolerant of your flaws and your differences. Okay? And then you will be more patient and tolerant of others. Okay? Relax and let go of frustration and inner conflict. Okay? Yes, shine. No, I don't want to shine. Yes, shine. Okay? Just let that go and um, you'll be able to be free to be yourself. I know a lot of women don't like geranium. It's because they have a very hard time loving and trusting themselves okay the last oil is rose and that rose is about divine love feel god's love smell it rub it all over you so we have our rose oil lotion every time you rub it on yourself just think that you're lathering yourself with love okay so allow yourself to be loved all over okay you know you want to shower your children with love with everything good, right? But so does God, okay? And he wants to love you and um, more than you even love your children. So your job is to receive his love. It's, you know, very difficult when you're trying to give somebody a gift and they say, no, no, I don't deserve it. And they turn around and they give you that gift back or, you know, give you a different uh, gift more, expensive or something and it's like well they really haven't allowed themselves to receive and accept 
okay so work on that and allow yourself to be healed and remember it's not as difficult as you imagine anyone want to comment to make any question uh, you know question, uh, comments and questions mm -hmm. Okay, so the last part of this is just to show gratitude for the perfection of your life. You know, sometimes you look at your life and you see all these loose threads that you thought had no place. Um, it actually fits perfectly in the tapestry that God is weaving for you. Uh, so show your appreciation for all things. And um, even those bad things have a perfect place and a perfect lesson for you to learn. And, um, you know, sometimes we wait until it goes away but um, accept it and um, you find that you transcend it. And, uh, you know, there's times when um, we need to fall on our faces. Sometimes tripping here and there is just not doing it for us and we really have to fall flat on our face. And uh, there's a good thing about that. It helps waken us up and um, helps us not be so passive. Okay? It helps us be more um, owning our power and just more responsible for our choices. So here are some affirmations that I think can help you and get started. Um, uh, it is safe for me to be me. I'm comfortable being me. I'm very interested in learning all about me and getting to know myself better. I love and accept myself fully and I can take off that mask now and just be me. Okay. So those are some affirmations you can make up more and um, and help yourself love yourself more okay and then be happy okay we should unmute everyone um, and go ahead guys and uh, you can ask questions or make comments You know, it's very liberating because as soon as I learned to love myself, I helped my children love themselves. So it's awesome. They, they find happiness and they allow themselves to, to receive love. Thank you, Jade and Ben. This has been phenomenal. Thank you, Jade. Yep. Do you want to add anything else? No. Okay. Go ahead and stop there. Unless anybody has anything that they want to add. Yeah. Did, did that make sense to you guys? Yeah. It's just a lot to take in for a minute. Yeah, it's a lot. This is a new way of thinking, isn't it? Yeah. And it's just, I can tell it was with myself, this is going to be one of the most more difficult things to do because that was how I was, I was raised as being the oldest of two older sis, two little sisters. It was always look out for them, watch out for them, you know, be there for them and kind of have myself put on a back burner. And that's just always been, I guess, transition to other relationships or other aspects of my life you know help some help them be there for somebody and all that just you know taking the time for yourself to be there for yourself yeah and you have a immense sense of guilt when you take time for yourself <laughs> yeah. yeah and you don't feel like you know you have the, uh, the sweetness give them the sweet stuff give them the good stuff I agree with you, Tom. I feel the same way sometimes. Jade, there's a correlation here with coriander and sweetness in life. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the very best oils to support the pancreas. Mm -hmm. There's that correlation there in, in 
healing from blood glucose issues because the pancreas is not doing its job. Yeah. And so I think we need to incorporate that a whole lot more in our lives, that coriander. Yeah. So when we do have sweetness, it's sort of like, no, I don't deserve it. And so this pancreas is saying, okay, I, I can't absorb you. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. So it's people who are um, uh, nutritionally deficient are the same way. There's times when they have um, certain uh, vitamins or minerals that they can't absorb, even if you give it to them, if they take it in all sorts of forms, they just can't absorb it. And that is a reflection of them not being able to receive love and affection. Uh, so sometimes when I help them uh, resolve that, love and affection, it goes away and their body's able to absorb it again. And, you know, once upon a time, the doctor said, oh, you, you've got this um, marker on your DNA or your blood and, you know, you've got an allergy to whatever. And, and at the end of the day, when we've resolved this, that problem that was diagnosed no longer exists. Amazing, because we have so much power within. Mm -hmm. Well, Jade. Peaches. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Um, I have a question. I, my question is, if you can help me understand this, what if you're just like an independent person who just feels like, you know, you do love yourself. You do care for yourself. You know, you care a lot about yourself, your feelings and just things you like to do. And then when you come across people that, that seem as if, you know what, like you're, they make it seem as if you're self-absorbed or not that you are self-absorbed. You're just confident and you, you care for yourself. But I, I think maybe they're intimidated by it. I don't know how, to, how, you, how you deal with that. Because I even find that sometimes in dating, like, you know, being a self-assured woman, <laughs> you know, sometimes the guys are a little uh, intimidated by you or, you or make it seem as if you're over the top, which you're really not. I, I don't think I am. And I don't think I'm overly demanding, but I know what I like. And I know how I would like to be treated. And it goes back to saying, like, you love yourself. When you love yourself, you treat yourself well. And you don't expect to be treated any less if you're, you know, trusting someone to love you. I, I don't know if you've been in that situation or you get what I'm saying. But it just, I just, I don't know. I get turned off easily sometimes, I guess. And I, I feel like people have made me try to make me feel like, uh, you know, you're, you're so, uh, what's the word? It's a word they would say, um, not over the top, but uh, they try to take it in. They try and make your self love seem like it's a negative thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can, I can tell I you a word. in Australia, we call it tall poppy syndrome. Okay, so <laughs> tall poppy. you're a tall poppy, chop you down so you're all equally, you know, same as everybody. We're down here, we're going to drag you down. Okay, and the yeah. feeling you get with them is just a repelling. So it's sort, sort of like, you know, a dark shadow trying to take over this, this light that you have in the room. You know, it doesn't belong, it doesn't feel like it belongs, but it doesn't like that light. So I know I had uh, one lady um, that I talked with. She's super negative. Uh, she told me that uh, she didn't like the way I smelled. I stunk to her. And oh, my God. All of these friends of mine were like, I can't get enough. I'm sniffing you. You know, you smell awesome. But here, this one lady, she insists on being negative. Like I said earlier, it's like internal conflict. It's like, yes, I want to have that love. But no, no, no. I don't deserve it. And I don't understand this. And so you have that love. You have this power. You have this light. And I don't like that, you know. Um, so it's their reflection. Um, and, you know, it shouldn't bother you. Sometimes I feel like, oh, negative people are a little bit draining. And you really don't yeah. want to deal with them. And that's fine. But it has nothing to do with you, really. Um, okay. Shining so much at, at that. And, and, you know, you attract light people. You attract people that are happy, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, keep doing that. Keep being who you are and march to your own drumbeat. And then these people that are negative and insist on being negative, they can't mm -hmm. hang out with you. And that's okay. And they can say whatever they want, but it, does, it just rolls off and it's okay. You figure it out when you figure it out. But, Jay, this, it's just weird. It's, I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm starting to... 
I think I've always been aware, but I'm just to a point where I'm just like, what? Not not like it's just a me syndrome, but it's almost like, okay. Like, I, like people try to make me, I almost sometimes feel like guilty. Like, am I too, you know, maybe my standards are mm-hmm. too high. You know, that's what it stands. Oh, you, you're raising your standards. You ain't going to never get a guy if you want all of these things. Ain't no man going to, you know, the girls will say, ain't no man going to want this. And ain't no man going to do all of that for you. And I don't think I'm asking too, you know, too much. I mean, there's just, just certain spiritual things that I know that I need or want or desire. And when you start talking about it and you tell your truth, it seems like they get offended or make you feel like you 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 want too much, you, you know, or you don't need all of that. And I need all of that. Like I need faithfulness. I need trusting. I need, you know, respect. There's just genuine things that I need, you know what I'm saying? And sincerity and, you know, somebody on my level that can get me because I just, I don't know. But I just been made to feel like, you know, Oh my gosh! One thing really? though, one thing though um, don't let it bother you. If it does bother you, there's something about it that you still have to resolve. Still, okay. So okay. Ask yourself, am I, you know, am I being a little bit too, um, you know, I guess allowing people, uh, trying to please people too much, because they're, they're insisting on this opinion, and then you know you have this opinion. But are you you're feeling well, maybe I should try to please them and make them happy? So that's probably mm-hmm. the discomfort that you have, um, and just mm-hmm. resolve it until you say, "Look, they're responsible for their own happiness, and mm-hmm. I'll let them be." Right? And I'm responsible for mine. Thank you so very much. Mm-hmm. I, I think also, um, you know, it, the first thing that you said, uh, Peaches, was that you're independent. And I think you're you're actually on the cusp of of something greater on the higher than in independence is interdependence mm-hmm. part of that is realizing that you know some people they don't have some things figured out and they don't know better than, than they're doing the best with, with what they know how and and that mm-hmm. maybe they're trying to cut you down or trying to make everybody the same or you know they're seeing yeah. they don't want you to be happy or you're you're strong and you're happy and they and and maybe they don't want that, but also there's a, the element of, and you, you, you can just see people in those situations and say like, okay, they're, they're, they're doing the best with what they have. You know, I, I'm mm-hmm. responsible for myself and, and that's right. You can only take care of yourself, but you can raise yourself up to a higher level. Um, in, independence is not the highest level. You want to be nurture relationships of interdependence. And sometimes people, might want to cut you down because they feel like they're not loved or they're not receiving anything. Um, when you cut yourself off from people and you say, I am independent, um, then that removes them from the picture and you want to be interdependent where you're relying on other people. You, you have this relationship with them. You need them. Uh-huh. They need you. Yeah. And I think when you, when you get to that higher plane, you, you'll find that you'll, the synergies that exist where your gifts and talents combine with their gifts and talents, um, be, you know, combine to make something greater and that you may not feel that way um, mm-hmm. in those sort of relationships or you may find like in your dating or um, relationships uh-huh. that um, when you're giving and taking at the same time, people will feel a more, you know, part of it and a connection. So, you know, we we can be grateful for um, these uh, opportunities of learning. Because I, you know, sometimes I feel like, hey, I got this. And then um, something else comes up and to challenge me. And so I find like, thank you. What's the learning opportunity here? Maybe I don't quite get it all. <laughs> and yeah. uh, you learn from that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I, feel like I go through that. I feel like I, I, you know, have gone through that. Like I have to, you know, question myself. And then I wonder, am I listening to people too much or my inner self? Like what's, you know, what's it really be? I mean, I do ask myself those kinds of questions, but I know also too from teachings from you guys and, you know, other, um, 
other uh, teachers that, you know, sometimes when you are called to go higher or you, you want more out of life, you got to run with those that do, you know, and mm-hmm. I feel like I've been made to feel guilty about wanting better things or more things out of life. I not, the, I'm just not the, I don't know. I just, if it's just not normal to think that way, but. Or maybe and, you're with the wrong crowd. Yeah. Or maybe also. I just, yeah. I've been trying to, uh, I should segregate whatever myself from, <laughs> crowds, <laughs> you know, crowds and really get alone and work on me more so to speak and really just affirm what i truly believe what i truly want in life and just go with it and 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 don't turn away because i've been told i I want certain things it's like well you don't have to have that if you don't have that are you not going to be happy and you i mean there's things i don't have to have but i i didn't have them before and but there's just certain things I expect and, and it's nothing bad, you know, it's not, it's nothing bad. I'm not a materialistic person mm-hmm. or anything like I'm more spiritual, you know, anything. And that's what I desire. And I look for that internally in other people, you know, but I'm working on me still. <laughs> I'm working on me, but I have been just lately the segregating myself from because I don't want drama anymore. I don't want negativity. I'm trying to get away from it. And I think I I remember you taught about detoxing and I just think I'm just going through this (laughs) period of where (laughs) things are coming up, you know, and I'm just like, ah, people better stay away from me. (laughs) 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 Oh, I better stay away from people. (laughs) I'm trying. I, I really am, but I'm trying to get myself healthy. I'm doing a detox and the vitamins and stuff. And I, I remember you said there's a period you negative things might come up, and I feel like I'm kind of going through that, mm-hmm. and still trying to hold on to you know myself and my you know dignity and integrity. You know, just kind of separating myself a little bit so I can just you know work through this, <laughs> work through this. <laughs> At the same time, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to other people. So you want to be around people who are going to buoy you up, be around people who are going to strengthen you. Or maybe um, not spend so much time with people who do tear you down, but you might find some ways of giving service of, of, you know, losing yourself in service or taking care of others. Um, you will be able to find yourself. So sometimes maybe withdrawing and trying to mm-hmm. introspective, um, stepping away from the social thing may not be the best um, mm-hmm. solution. So but I want to share with you though. Maybe be around the, the, the right people. And so um, a lot of uh, people that I mentor actually, they graduate. So they graduate as in they move on from the community, the group of people that they're with, so I have a friend, she, she has a um, very negative uh, family uh, situation and, mm-hmm. and, and then they're all in the same state and they, uh, as in, in the US. So she moved away um, and mm-hmm. you know, she, sometimes you do have to graduate from them. One of my friends, she can't work anymore because she, she's changed and she recognized that this is just no longer a good place for you, for her. Um, for me, I lost friends too. <clears throat> because I've moved on and I allowed myself to change. Um, mm. And some of my friends insist on being the same, insist on having the same lifestyle. And, you know, it oh, just wow. no, no longer fit, that's all. So that's, that's yeah. fine. Um, I guess what I feel like I'm I, I'm going through, like something's, I got to change, yeah, like I just have purging. to change. Yeah, that's purging. You just have to let go. And you don't hold, you know, yourself down and feel bad for having standards. Standards are important. And yeah. you find that you have, you meet people with your same standard. But a lot of, you know, those gurus and the big thinkers, the big minds, they've had lots of time being independent and thinking, you know, Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights before he started his mission. Um, yeah. you know, have all of these people that have spent some time in solitude to kind of work out what's happening in here. Who am I? What's happening? And then yeah. you realize that then you can see the world for what it is and then know who you are and then stand for it. Okay, so these people will challenge you so they can work out what your real standard is. 
So if they say, well, I don't worry about this and this and this, you think, no, no, I really do like that. And write it down and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm going to adopt this and keep this. Because, you know, you'll meet the same the same with. <clears throat> so you know, you'll meet your best friend. And why not? Right? Yes. Amen. And as we grow and go through all those things that you're working on and the detoxing and the emotional stuff, like you do change. So sometimes you outgrow certain people because they're not on that level and you know, you're on a different level, but also you have to look at where they're coming from. Cause if they're not spiritual and you want somebody that has that spiritualness that you do, they're not going to, they're not going to understand that. And that's like part of like how the world sees things, but like, you deserve all those things that you listed because you know that that's what you want to have a good relationship. And there's people that, you know, wait for that. And then they find that and they're grateful for the time of waiting. And when they, you know, when they finally find it. So it's not like you're having this list of, like you said, materialistic or unrealistic things. You are just growing and you want somebody that's going to match where your spirit and where you're wanting to go. And there's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) So, you know, you just look at where they are and if it's equal to where you are and if you're growing, then maybe they don't understand that. But you stand your for, like Jade said, you stand for um, your uh, values and what you want in someone because that's going to bring you the most blessings and happiness that you need and you deserve because God loves you and that's what he's showing you what you need and what you can get, you know. So, Amen. Yeah. Stacy, that's beautiful, Stacy. Thank you so much. <laughs> it may take a little longer, but okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Thank you, This is awesome because I'm sure a lot of listeners um, feel the same way. As I know, a lot of people I'm mentoring feel the same way. And they're like, Jade, I feel like I need to quit my job. I'm, I'm, you know, like we've outgrown people. Um, wow. They insist on being here. They don't want to come along and you can't do anything about it. We can't force people to be happy and positive and own their own power and choose their own happiness. So it's okay. But then your new friends are cooler. (laughs) That's it. Amen. Thank you guys so much. I know I came in on the tail end of this, but I was like, I have to like get that out off my chest. Cause I'm going, I know I'm just going through something, you know, right now. And, uh, it's just like, whoa, God, help me, please. But, you know, I mean, it's not a terrible, terrible thing, but it's it's a change. It's a change that I'm going, I'm just having to go through. And, you know, we let go, release, growth. It's just, yeah. It's <laughs> pain, isn't it? Yeah. It's a change. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ginger, did you want to say something? Okay, I thought there was something. All right, guys, thank you so much for participating today. Um, So go out and develop self-love and share that love. All right.